Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I lost no time in creating a couple of shaker cards using the MFT, the Margarita, and the Martini shaker card window and frame dynamics. My original plan was to make one card with two of them and ended up making two cards because I was just having fun with it. So I'm starting with some Distress watercolor paper. This is the packs of the pre-cut that's cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have my glass media mat here and I just smushed on some um, Twisted Citron Distress Ink. And I am picking it up with a really big paintbrush. This is a silver size eight brush. And just really messily painting it onto the watercolor paper. Just nothing too fancy. Um, adding some water adding some color, setting it aside, letting it do its thing. I was originally, like I said, I was going to do one card and I was going to use two different colors. I was going to use the Twisted Citron and I think like Peacock Feathers, like do kind of a greeny blue sort of a background. And then when I was doing the green one, I was like, no, I want to do a pink one because if I'm going to get a slushy drink, most more often than not, I'm going to lean towards like something with strawberry or raspberry or my personal favorite is actually um, a peach Bellini. Ugh. Making these, I was just like, man... <laughs> So I used, picked raspberry for my second background, did the exact same thing. Just smushed the ink onto my gra my glass mat, picked it up with the water brush or the paintbrush, painted on the background, added a bit of water, set it aside. And then I grabbed a third piece. And this time I have the smooth side facing up with the other two. I let the textured side show just because sometimes it's kind of fun to show that little bit of texture. But with this, I have the smooth side facing up and I just picked up more of the color and I'm just painting it on because that's going to be the actual like drink on the inside of these shakers. So I just kind of painted a line and added the color. So I did that with the Twisted Citron and I added a bit more of that just to deepen it up a little bit because by this point it's very watered down. And then I did the exact same thing with the second one. And I just kept holding the dies in place just to kind of give me an idea of how much of the area I needed to paint because I'm going to die cut these with these pieces when everything is all dry. And then I did the exact same thing with the picked raspberry and um, the margarita wafer die there. So just painted it on, added some color, um, deepened it up a little bit. Didn't worry about, they obviously don't need to be smooth. They're in my head, they're blended drinks, although normally martinis aren't, but if there is a blended option. That's what I always go for. I just, I like, I like them that way. So anyway, <laughs> after everything's dry, I did speed it up with my heat tool, just, you know, speed up the drying process. I liberally sprayed my main backgrounds with the distress sprayer. So I get that fun splatter effect. I let, I sprayed it with water, let it sit for roughly a minute, Picked up, picked it up with my paper towel there, so I got that fun splatter. Let that dry again, and then I'm smushing the ink directly onto an acrylic block here, and I'm using my paintbrush to create a bit of a splatter, but because I'm using such a big brush, um, it's absorbing most of the splatter, so rather than really being able to do the splatter against the acrylic block like I normally do, I found I just need to tap it against my finger, and all that color is, you know, splattering onto the background. So just something really fun. I do the exact same thing with the picked raspberry as well. Just tap that brush against my finger and get all that deeper pink raspberry splatter all over the um, background. And then after everything was dry, I die cut those two pieces I'd painted with the smaller dies from the margarita and martini shaker mix. And I accidentally tore the bottom of the cardstock there on the margarita piece, but I'm going to fix that in a minute. And then I decided to die cut the outlines with um, solid colors of cardstock just to make it more fun. I was originally going to do white and then like color it with a Copic to kind of make it look like glass, you know? And I was like, no, let's just go all out and make these fun and really bright and colorful. So I have, of course, the shaker pouches too that I showed in my last little haul video. You could do these with just clear pieces of acetate, like just cut them down, adhere them. That works fine. And then use some foam tape. But I just, I find the shaker pouches are convenient and they're fun because I love the shapes of them. I'm I'm all about anything that makes life a little easier. So I have both shaker pouches here and I decided the easiest way to do this would be to trim or like trace the shaker pouches onto just some copy paper and then I'm going to trim these out inside the lines like roughly an eighth of an inch. I wasn't measuring but just cutting inside the lines this way I can adhere my watercolored pieces, like the insides of the drinks, 
to these copy paper outlines and then I can adhere these to the back of those shaker pouches and it just makes things a little more convenient, a little easier and it gives me the freedom to, to adhere these drinks however I want. And yeah, this is kind of how I like to do it when I'm using shaker pouches rather than cutting. You can cut windows like right into your backgrounds and do it that way and that works really well too. But I find that this makes it the easiest to adhere the backing to seal in the actual shaker contents. So I just applied adhesive to the back of my die cut pieces and then adhered them to the copy paper. So now I have a nice little border all around the edge. And then I'm going to flip over my outline drink die cuts here, apply a thin amount of adhesive around the perimeter, and then I can pop those shaker pouches into place and let that adhesive dry. And I'm just using Ranger's multi-medium matte adhesive for all of this because it's super strong and it adheres to anything. And I'm able to apply like a really thin amount because you don't want glue oozing out everywhere. That, that gets messy. And then I'm just making sure that my um, copy paper outlines aren't going to go past the die cuts. Even if they did, I could trim it off with scissors. And then to fix my boo-boo, I just adhered one of the jewels right over it. So now nobody can see it. <laughs> and for the actual shaker elements, I'm just using some Pretty Pink Posh. I'm using Spring Green and Watermelon Jewels, as well as some Pretty Pink Posh Clear Seed Beads. Just kind of adding a fair amount to these because, you know, you got to fill these drinks like full. So I added those. And then I can just add my adhesive to that little copy paper border there. And then I can flip that over and adhere it to the back of my drink. And now I have this freestanding, basically, little shaker drink that I can adhere to my creation wherever I want. So I just got to, you know, make sure it's pressed around evenly and then let that dry. And I'm going to repeat the exact same process for my little martini, just using slightly less amounts of the jewels and the seed beads because it's a much smaller little shaker. And with that one, that's the one I used the spring green on. So I've got my little shakers made. Now for the sentiment I wanted to use is from the um, MFT Spirited Sentiment stamp set. And the sentiment is way too wide for um, my card. It's my, like the, like I said, the card base is four and a quarter by five and a half. And the sentiment is more than four and a quarter inches wide. So I'm cutting it apart. I know that freaks people out, but it doesn't hurt the stamp. And I can still butt everything up the way it was intended to be and use it as is. I just make sure to cut, you know, in the open areas between the words and it's fine. And I cut this part, not twice, but three times to create three separate lines of sentiments. If it really bothers you, you can like mask off and stamp and do all that kind of stuff. I used to do that back in the day. That was just, you know, what we did, especially when we were using, you know, rubber mounted, you know, wood mounted stamps. It's kind of what you had to do, but that's why I love clear stamps is because yeah, you can just cut them apart and this just makes it easier and you get more use out of it and you can still use it as intended but this made my life so much easier because I'm, I'm able to stamp all these pieces separately I'm stamping them onto some Simon stone um, cardstock here is it stone no smoke gray smoke gray cardstock and I was originally just going to use white embossing powder that's my thing and then I remembered I have some really fun color embossing powders from Wendy Vecchi for Ranger. So that's what I ended up using. I'm using cactus flower and leaf green embossing powders. How fun are these? So pulled those out, stamped my sentiments with um, juicy embossing ink, and then heat embossed them with those colored embossing powders, and then trimmed everything down with my paper trimmer. And since I'm doing doubles of everything, two different colors of embossing powder, cutting those stamps apart made this go a lot faster. <laughs> so I've got everything heat embossed, trimmed down. I decided to do my card bases in the fun colors I used for the outlines of the drinks. And off camera, I'd also die cut those watercolor backgrounds with the largest of the MFT A2 stitched rectangle stacks set to dynamics. <laughs> Some of these titles just, yeah, they're, they're a mouthful but one of my favorite sets of wafer dies for die cutting panels for my card fronts. So I die cut that so it's got that nice little stitched edge and it's slightly smaller than my card base so the color can peek out there. And I adhered my watercolor backgrounds just with my Xyron Mega Runner because that's a fair bit of adhesive and I didn't want to squeeze a ton of multimedia matte just to do the whole, you know, background panel. But then for all the other little elements, the shaker glasses and the um, sentiments, that's where I use the multimedia matte because I could just squeeze little squiggly lines of that to adhere everything. 
on camera, it's a little difficult to see um, that green embossing powder on the gray, but in real life, you can see it. It is totally legible. It doesn't fade into it, but yeah, the natural light and on camera, it's like, oh, it looks like I'm just adhering three lines of gray cardstock, but there's sentiments there. Trust me, they're there. <laughs> so I just adhered those directly on top of my little shaker glass, just kind of doing it crooked because I'm just thinking, you know, shaker, movement, really trying hard not to put everything straight. That's what I normally do. It's difficult for me. It really is sometimes to put things on angles and whatnot. So um, the inside though, I did put the sentiment straight. So I had stamped and embossed separately a sentiment from that same set. It's the one that says, may your spirits be spiked. I thought that was cute. So I adhered that to the inside and did that with both cards and did the exact same thing with the pink card, just adhered everything into place. And then as a final little bit of embellishment, I pulled out these pretty pink posh um, clear drops. I have two different sizes of them. And they kind of made me think of like, you know, bubbles and whatnot. So I um, sprinkled them rather liberally on my card here in both sizes, the large and the small. And then I'm just going to adhere these into place with my multi-medium matte adhesive. Um, I find, I don't have a problem with people have asked before, like, you know, why don't you use glossy accents? Because, you know, these are clear, like, won't it dry matte underneath? I find with anything like this, you can't tell what type of adhesive you used, at least not with the multimedia matte. They just dry clear and it's good to go. So now I've got my fun little shaker cards. Always the best, that sound. Isn't that fun? So that finished them off for today. As always, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to everything I use. So you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.